Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I am so happy you're here. Today we're doing some Dollar Tree DIYs for your spring decor, so let's get started. For this project, I'm using a scrap piece of wood. This is a one by six that I just found in the garage that I think we used as slats for a wall that we put up in our backyard last year. I'll link that video above because it's really good. Anyway, I'm just gonna paint it with my white chalk paint and I want some of that wood to peek through so I'm not completely covering it and so you can still see the grain of the wood and I'm doing all four sides as well. And then I'm gonna take three of these little bunny picks from the Dollar Tree. I painted those white also and gave them a pretty solid coat. So I'm gonna be covering them with some coordinating pretty spring colored paper. These are in these really pretty soft greens. I wasn't sure which ones I was gonna use, but I just had these in my inventory, which is kind of pretty big too. <laughs> so I'm just going to trace around my little bunnies on the back side of my paper, and then I'll cut those out I started by using my big fat scissors and <laughs> quickly realized I needed something a little bit smaller for these little bunnies. So I remembered that a sweet viewer had sent me some detail scissors and then another viewer sent me a perky prize of these darling little scissor cozies, I guess you could call them, but they're so pretty and handmade. So thank you both for your sweet gifts. They're just so adorable and I appreciate it so much. So now I'm going to cover my bunnies with the paper using some Mod Podge and I'm just going to brush it on there pretty generously. So basically I'm just using it as a glue and then I'll flatten that out, make sure there's no bubbles or bumps. And I didn't poke a hole where the eyeball was. I'm just gonna leave it completely solid. And I'll do that with all three of my cutouts. And you can see why I painted all of the sides and my bunnies in the first place so that when I go to sand it, it leaves some of that paint showing on the edges. But also if you're not a great cutter outer like me, <laughs> If you cut it a little short, it doesn't matter because that'll just poke out and be super cutie patootie. And part of my Perky Prize box that I got from the viewer that sent me the little scissors also had this adorable little emery board that I can use to sand those super small edges of my bunnies. And that way I can get into all of the nooks and crannies. And then once I got done sanding everything, I just used my wire cutters to cut off that bottom stick and then just sand it over that so it didn't have a rough edge. So I wanted my bunnies to be raised on the board. So I'm using Dollar Tree's foam squares. They're adhesive and have really good adhesive on them. So I just stacked three on top of each other and then I'm gonna leave that top one covered because I'm not ready to stick them yet. And then I took some little white pom-poms to hot glue to their little bums because you have to have a cottontail for bunnies. And so I'm just gonna glue all three of those onto there. And then I wanted a sign at the top of my piece of wood. So I'm gonna use the welcome part of this adorable sign from the Dollar Tree. And using my Cricut spatula, I'm just gonna release that glue and take it off. It's got a sweet little curve. It was a little too low for where my bunnies were. My bunnies were a little too tall. So I kinda had to push it up and make it go to the curve that would fit my bunnies down below, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna measure between each of the cottontails. They were three and a half inches apart. So I started with the one in the middle and then measured out the three and a half inches to the next bunny tail. And then that way they're separated equally. And then I took the bottom adhesive piece off and then just added it to my board. And then Dollar Tree also has these pretty wood stands or easels. I'm just gonna sit that on top of it. Or you could put a little sawtooth hanger on the back and hang it on the wall. But here it is all finished and I just love how adorable this is. The soft colors of green and spring. Ah, I love it. I hope you guys like it too. For this project, I'm using three of the mini wreath forms and then a couple of rolls of Easter ribbon and then a whole bunch of pretty pink flowers. And I'm making sure that I have the same amount of flowers on each of my three wreaths because these are gonna go on my cabinet doors and so they'll be next to each other. So I want them to look similar to each other. So I just separated them and divided them by three after I figured out how many I had. And I think I have three different kinds of flowers on each of my wreaths. So I'm just gonna take my flowers off of the stems and then using my hot glue, I'm gonna glue it onto my wreath form. And I used the nice big ones so that it would cover all of that wire. 
and I just used my hot glue, a lot of it, <laughs> to make sure that they stayed in place. And I'm gonna attach them to my wreath form and distribute them evenly as far as like which flowers are gonna go across from which flowers and so on and so forth. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's not rocket science, but I just thought it would be a nice evenly allocated look for the wreaths to have them all look the same. So once I got my wreaths done, I'm gonna take some greenery and this is from Walmart. I just wanted to add a little bit more life to these wreaths and you don't have to. In fact, I contemplated leaving them the way they were because they're so soft and pretty and springy already. But I think the green adds a little bit more of that representation of spring and growth. And so I just added it, but you don't have to. And then to bring a little bit more cuteness to the bottom of our wreaths, I'm going to take a skewer and stick it into the bunny. That always hurts me. <laughs> and I'm just going to paint them with my white chalk paint and then set those aside to dry. Now I'm going to take my pretty plaid spring ribbon and wrap it around the top of my wreaths and then hot glue that together. And then I took some more of it and added some white grow grain ribbon to it to make a double patterned perky bow. So I just used the fold over method and did that about three times on each side. So there'll be a total of six loops and then used a chenille stem to tie it together and then foof my loops and then attach that to the top where I attached my original ribbon to hang it onto my cabinet. And then I'll hot glue my bunny to the very bottom and it's done. And here they are all attached to my cabinets, my new white cabinets. This was actually from last year, but I never got a chance to post it. So, hey, I'm only a year behind. <laughs> anyway, I just attached it on the inside of my cabinets and I just love this look. And I love adding pinks and greens to my spring decor. It just makes everything light and happy. But I love them and I hope you like them too. For this project, I used two of Dollar Tree's plastic watering stakes and a felt bunny garland. And then I have my black and white paint pens. And I giggle every time I see these, but my grandbabies absolutely love them. So I'm gonna see which colors go best together with my stakes and then cut the bunny ears off with about an inch or so extra fabric from the head. And then to get it to curve around with the shape of my globe, I just kind of pinched it in the middle and gave it a little crease and then added some hot glue to that area and attached it to the back of his head. Well, the globe, but it's his head. <laughs> and then I'm gonna make a sweet little bunny face with my black paint pen. And then once that paint is completely dry, I'll go back and do some highlighting with the white just to give it some more cuteness. So then I made a sweet little bow around the steak part of my bunny and I'll give it a little dot of hot glue to keep it in place. And then I made another one to give this guy a friend, but if you watch my channel regularly, you know that I have a black thumb and cannot keep plants alive. So not only do these make me smile, I actually have a plant that is kind of thriving because I don't have to remember to water him, just put some water inside of it. And then in the off season, when I put my spring decor away, I just kind of tuck these little guys in the back so that the plants cover them up and you can't see them.
For this Dollar Tree DIY, I used a frame, some flowers, and this metal bunny cutout. And I'm gonna paint him with a mixture of ballet slipper and white chalk paint. And then I'll paint three Jenga pieces as well. And those are gonna be my lifters because I love that dimensional look you get when things are raised because that pretty shadow comes out. So anyway, I always pick up white frames from the Dollar Tree when I find them because I don't have to paint them. <laughs> but I'm gonna trace the cardboard backing onto a piece of Dollar Tree's adhesive wallpaper. And then I'll put that back into my frame and use that as our background. And then I'll close up those little tabbies. And you always wanna be really careful with these little tabs because the frames are usually either like foam or real thin plastic. So just be mindful about that. So now I'm gonna use my paint pen and I made little dots for the eyes and a nose. And I want this to look like a peep marshmallow, you know those little thingies? <laughs> and then with my white paint pen, I wrote, hanging with my peeps. Now you can use rub-on letters or stencils, your cutting machine, or the transfer method that I like to show you guys if you print it out on a piece of copy paper. However you wanna get the wording on there and make it say whatever you want, but I just thought this was really cute. And I have to tell you, peeps have a special meaning for our family. My dad, uh, who went to be with Jesus in 2006, loved him some peeps, but not just out of the box. He would cut holes in the plastic or little slits and then let them age for a few days. So they were a little bit harder and chewier, which is actually how I like them now too. <laughs> anyway, I super glued my Jenga pieces onto the back of Mr. Peep here and then attached him onto the frame. And then I let that dry for a little bit so that he stays put. And then I'll embellish the top with some pretty pink and white gingham ribbon and some flowers and greenery for some cuteness and also to cover up his pierced little ears. <laughs> And here it is all finished and just another way to welcome spring and it puts a smile on my face every time, especially because I think of my dad. I love this and I hope you like it too. So I've had these Dollar Tree styrofoam frames for a few months now, and I have been waiting anxiously for spring to do this project. I was gonna do one large and one small one, but I decided to just do the big one for this video. So I'm gonna give it a nice thick coat of white chalk paint to cover up some of that texture of the styrofoam, you know, like those little teeny circles and any dents and stuff, but the dents were okay because I want this to look like an old frame. So while it's still wet, I'm gonna take a mixture of my hazelnut and antique wax to give it a distressed finish. So it's kind of more blending than, it's not the dry brush, it's more of the just kind of blending it in to make it look like that wood. And then I painted three of Dollar Tree's mini styrofoam eggs with different shades of my Waverly chalk paint in crystal. So I'll add a little bit of brown and actually I just used the same mixture that I had when I was doing the distressing on my frame and I'm making them different shades with the browns and the whites and that crystal blue so they're all the same color family but they're a little bit different so kind of like siblings right <laughs> So now I'm gonna take the end of an empty ribbon spool to use as a base for the nest that I'm making. And I'm gonna use floral moss on that. Now you can use just regular cardboard or whatever you have. Sometimes I use a jar lid, but I wanted this one to be a little more flexible because I'm gonna fit it into the frame when I'm done. That'll make sense in a minute. But I'm just adding lots and lots of hot glue and shaping it into kind of a nest shape. So I'm pushing it down in the middle 
and then kind of curving it out so the sides are a little bit higher. And then I'll just keep gobbing on that moss and I'll cover the bottom as well. So now I'm just going to take some more hot glue and glob it on one of the corners. I use the bottom left side and I'm going to take some of Dollar Tree's reindeer moss and glue that down to the sides and the corner. And I keep shaking it off so that I know what's stuck and where I need to add more. And then to add my nest, I used a floral pick. You could use a push pin, I guess, or I don't know. You could just glue it on there, but I think I wanted this to be a little more sturdy so it stayed snug as a bug in a rug. But I think technically you could even staple this in there because it's the styrofoam or make two holes and wire it in there, however you wanna get it in there. <laughs> just make sure it stays. And then to help keep all of that moss from shedding all over the place, I gave it a healthy coat of hairspray. Actually two coats, I think. So then I ran into a little design trouble here. <laughs> I first used some of this pretty white narcissus. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but you know how I am with flowers and plants. But I'm just gonna poke them in on both sides of my corner piece. But as I was working, I just kind of didn't like the color. I, I, and who, why would I not like white? I don't know, but I just didn't like the way that it looked. So I tried almost every flower color that I had. I tried my scrap bin and was going to do just greenery, but finally I decided to use some of Walmart's lavender stem. And I think it was the right call as far as the color and scale and what I was looking for. So I'm just going to glue that in and then I glued in my pretty little eggs and it was done. And here's how it finally turned out. And oh my goodness, I love this, as my mom would say, more than my luggage. I just think it's so pretty and soft and springy. I have it on my mantle. It goes with everything. I just love how this turned out, and I hope you guys like it too. I hope you enjoyed these projects. And if you did, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. If you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down at the bottom, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video, which hopefully will be more often. Anyway, I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.